sing together.
to lift your hands heavenward one more time. Shana manane sana Shana manana mayana saka Dibi dipa dia duta kan dia dapat I'll put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, you are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, you are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. you are all that matters. Nanya mana sasa. What would I gain if you take the Holy Ghost? Nothing without you. What would have become of me if I didn't see your light? What would have been said of me if you didn't hold my hand? Now I've come to realize that you are all I have. I don't believe us in the house tonight. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all the night. You are all the night. You are all the night, Jesus. I wish I could hear you sing it out. Oh, well, oh, well.
and speak in other tongues and blast in other tongues as you worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who made all things new, the one who made it possible for us to be here today. Jesus! Can you lift up your hands and begin to speak in other tongues tonight? I wish you can say it. Say things, mystical things to God tonight. Tell him that is all that matters to you. Tell him that silver or gold cannot take his place. Tell him sweet things tonight. I thank God for those who are worshiping. Open up your mouth to Jesus. Open up your mouth and lift up your voice. I want to hear people tonight who are ready, who are ready to take the name of Jesus. Oh, can we begin to have koinonia tonight? Can we begin to have koinonia tonight? Can I hear people tonight who want to speak mysteries? Patoko batata tayada, esetete patoko batayada. And 
sing with an understanding. Let him hear you say, I'm a widow man. I need no cover. You didn't come here to joke. You came to proclaim. Understanding instruction, counsel, and wisdom from you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and have your way in our midst. As we listen, as we sit and listen to hear your word this evening. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed and believed and say amen. 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 You are so much welcome, our people. We love you so much. We are so honored and happy to have you tonight and to minister to you this evening. I hope you've already broken your fasts or oh, you're grabbing a, a cup of coffee. And uh, everyone, every cell, wherever you are attending from, you are so much welcome. And we know that you're now settling in to listen to the word. And uh, we're just going to bless your hearts and bless the name of the Lord in songs, with songs. Open your heart and let it be cultivated as the word of the Lord comes to you. Hallelujah. Be blessed as you're listening. Amen. Yes, Father, we just continue to love on you even tonight. Every heart is ready to receive from you and every mind is ready to perceive your word tonight. Like Bridget has said, our hearts are open to receive and will come in every cell, in every heart, in every home, in every space that you have been given tonight, we will come in. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus 
Father, we continue to bless your name. Look at these beautiful songs, Lord. And then bless your heart and your people's hearts, Lord. Turning, you are. 
worship you place of their submission is unto you. Unto you, Lord. Unto your word. And because they've tuned in, Lord, those that are on right now, live, and those that are watching this broadcast later, that they've even taken time to come looking for it. They've submitted themselves to your spirit, to your word your wisdom, your counsel, your admonition, your word of life. 
we thank you. We bless your name. We love you. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you. Speak to our hearts, Lord, we pray. Our hearts are open to receive and to hear from you. We love you. And we are here for you, Lord Jesus. Speak, Lord. Speak, Holy Spirit. Your children are listening. In the name of Jesus. Everybody says, A precious amen, amen. Glory to God Almighty, I want to welcome all of you to tonight's service. All of you dear ones, coming on from different places in the earth. Our love selves, you are welcome. I was just checking on you a while ago and I've seen all of you love selves that are tuned in from the different places. We love you. Cell leaders, you're doing a fantastic job. And our cell hosts, your reward is sure for opening your homes to the saints of God. And to you all, the dear cell members, for making the cell alive. It wouldn't be a cell if it was only the cell leader there. All of you cell members that are gathering wherever you are in the cell program that you had before, just before coming on, we bless God for you and we bless you and we say amen to all your prayers and prayer requests in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless all of you at the different levels, the hosts, the leaders and the members. We appreciate you and we love you deeply. Welcome to the service tonight. And um, let me see, one, two, three things. Number one, today our missions head Justin Cavallo has been laying to rest the body of her dad, her biological father, um, up country, who went home to be with the Lord the other day. It's just a family notice, family announcement for those of you that may not have known that Justine Caballo, I think anybody who comes online regularly, you probably know that dear, that dear child of mine. She's our mission's head, hard worker, lover of the ministry, uh, very profitable member of this family. Her dad went home to be with the Lord. Uh, on Tuesday laid body laid to rest today we celebrate his life he's run his race as a dear old gentleman by her report Justine's report it, it shows that he, he knew the Lord because she said he's gone home to glory that means he knew the Lord and if a man has raised children to that age, he has done a good job. He has done a good job. So when we have, uh, so we have two members. We have Scholar Mugisha. Those of you that are usually online, and you see the name Scholar Mugisha, her and Justine are sisters, and they share the dad, family members of this family. So we, we pray prayers of comfort for them. They sounded strong when I was chatting with them. We pray that Lord strengthens them and we bless God for their father's life who has raised them, been there for them up to this time. They are big girls now. I've not inquired about their youngest. but So there's a team that represented us, including my wife and Pastor Rona, that traveled up country to be with them. They, they are on their way back as we speak now. So we bless God for Justine and Scholar's father. 
and for the life God lent him to them and to the body of Jesus. Praise God. That said, welcome in a special way to today's service. And I just want to let you know that tonight or today has been the 40th day of our 55 day fast. Double grace. 40th day. That leaves us 15 days to go. That's two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. 15 days to go is two weeks. All right? And we are doing... What are we doing, Jessica, through this fast? We are doing four things. Are they four things? Number one, we are attending church as we saw that if you're fasting and not making time for congregating, you're just a bad mannered child. <laughs> if you're fasting and you have no time to attend church, just bad manners, simple, put simply. Bad manners, just bad manners. You can be fasting and having no time to attend services. So we are gathering uh, more disciplinedly than ever before. Number two, we are reading the Bible. We are spending time in the Word so that we can fulfill Scripture. Man does not live by bread alone. Of course, we get someone's preach to us when we gather, but also getting time to feed ourselves to, to not be babies who are waiting for a silver spoon to be put in our mouths digging into the word in our private bible study and bible reading and so we put up a simple really simple bible reading plan which many of you are blessed by and you've been asking it should continue even after the fast and i don't see why it should stop you see so it will continue and we've just been reading two books two books every day a chapter every day and every child is free to read more than that your other Bible readings, but the, 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 what, what we are doing together as family is a chapter of the books we began with Proverbs alongside John. When we finished Proverbs and John, we went to Ecclesiastes and Acts. And when we are finishing Ecclesiastes and Acts, we'll be pointing you to the next books we are doing. So today we did Ecclesiastes 9 and Acts 19. For a moment there, they locked on the numbers. In, in rhyming so it's been Ecclesiastes 4 and Acts 14 uh, Ecclesiastes so now we are Ecclesiastes 9 and Acts 19 that was today so before you sleep you do those chapters and then you throw in extra according to your usual personal Bible reading discipline that must not be put on hold because some of you we already found you good Bible readers but move with us also as a family corporate spirit family spirit as we do these books so that's bible reading number three we are doing praying so because fasting without prayer every fasting season is fasting and prayer fasting the word and prayer because if you're fasting and you're not talking to god or making time for prayer then you're wasting time again so we are praying that's why blessed be god it found us when we have our monday revival uh, meetings and altars We've been having extras almost every Friday. And tomorrow, Friday, we shall be at the old cathedral again. So we've been having, and of course, blessed be God. World Restoration Center Church is the richest. The other time I was thinking about our church schedules in a week, and I thought how God has given us such a beautiful wealth. In this ministry, we have no time to waste. And yet there's no meeting that is dead. Every meeting is alive and wet with a spirit our Sunday services, and then the Monday revival prayer meeting, so rich, so beautiful. Tuesday seems to be like a day we skip, but that's preparations for Agape. Then Wednesday we meet, we enjoy Agape. Then Thursday we come for the love fest. Then Friday we've been meeting, and then we skip. So we actually have a beautiful, fruitful program through the week with corporate meetings except for Tuesday and Saturday. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So we are praying and every gathering that gathers us to pray is for us to take advantage of so that we speak to the Lord and pour out our hearts and have communion with him and speak our hearts to him. And what else? 
We are doing what? How many things? Those are three. There is no fourth one. Okay. You're doing what? Giving. Yeah, giving. How can we not be givers? So, um, so that's what we had. So today is day 40. And that leaves us with 15 days to go. And so all of you welcome. Nora, welcome online. Pastor Rona, welcome. Tezra, Sarah, welcome. Uh, God's Lamb, you're welcome. You survived the Passover or you, re you resurrected. Winnie Tracy, you're welcome. Becky, you're welcome. Irene Mutinye, you're welcome. Gerald, you're welcome. Brenda, you're welcome. Jack, you're welcome. Derek, you're welcome. Sheila Nabs, you're welcome. Son of his bosom, that's a cell name. You're welcome. Smile Queen, you're welcome. Gladys Clear, you're welcome. Tasha Kaiser, Edith Grace, Chandia Lucky, Fiona Walsimbi, Mary, all of you dear ones. Elizabeth, Lydia, you are welcome. Jennifer, you are well, 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 welcome. Praise God Almighty. And all of you that will come on later, you are all welcome. Oof. And so, tonight, on my heart, we had a beautiful Agape meeting last night. Always beautiful. They're always beautiful. Does anyone get tired of me saying we had a beautiful Agape meeting last night? They're always beautiful. Praise God. Tonight, my message is simple and yet so beautiful. It's a message that as I looked on the days that are remaining in our fast, the Lord just put it on my heart to, to bring in every child of God, every child of God, to bring them in in case there is any struggler any one left behind anyone missing in action or focus anyone that is not on board or half on board half in half out as we fast and pray this message is to help you and those of you that are wondering how do I get the best out of my fasting and to anybody that feels tired of fasting because it's a, an old Christian exercise yes it is an old Christian exercise but one that will never expire it will never expire until rapture as long as church remains on the earth there will always be fasting and prayer and gathering and Bible reading. That's why Jesus said, when you fast, when you fast, he knew we would have to fast. Tonight's message is simple but beautiful. It's going to challenge you, edify your heart. I'm talking about fasting unto God. Fasting unto God. And it comes at a time when we have two weeks to the end of the fast, to the end that if there is anybody at all, as we come close to the end of the fast, that was left behind or still has not put a finger on what we are doing, what is it about, where is it taking me, what should I expect, how should I do it? Because when you've been in ministry for a while, you, you just come to know that people are not usually at the same level. Some people are very quick and they are ahead. And they're running fast and strong. Then there are others that are somewhere in the middle, pushing on determinedly. Then there are those sometimes at the back, they've not even started when others are about to arrive. Then there are those that are following and doing what is being done and wondering what is it about anyway? Where is it taking us? Why are we doing this? Why are we suffering? And this message is to to just bring, I feel in my heart, to just bring everybody on board that in these remaining days, we can at least synchronize and just have a fruitful end to our fast. And that the results, by the way, the results of your fasting outlive the fasting time. I hope you dear people know that. 
we, we don't fast to get the harvest of that fast in the time of the fasting. No. Fasting time is actually sowing time. Spiritual sowing. It's sowing time. You sow to the spirit. The Bible says he that sows to the flesh shall reap to the flesh and he that sows to the spirit shall reap to the spirit. Fasting time is sowing time, sowing to the spirit. And so when you fast and do everything that comes with it, you are sowing to the spirit. Sowing to the spirit. And the harvest outlives the 55 days of fasting or 40 or whichever number of days you do. That's why it's so, 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 so important for everybody to be on board and also anticipate the results and the blessings of fasting. So tonight I'm talking to you about fasting unto God. You probably never had a message like that. And why a message like this is so important is because we are not doing a new thing. Many of us have been in Christianity for quite a while. And one of the things we got tired of is fasting. Let me tell you something. I hate religion. I hate religion. I hate it with perfect hatred. I hate rituals. I hate religious rituals. I hate rituals. It's like men of God that stand behind the pulpits. Every end of service, they make their congregation stand up and say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Then they hear somebody preaching the grace of God and they say, no, 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 no. You have to be serious. This grace gospel is spoiling people. And that, that hypocrite just stood in their Sunday service ending and told the people, let's say the grace. Those are rituals. Rituals that a man of God says, let's say the grace. That means they're just saying it and they are not even paying attention to what they are saying. It's ritualistic to them. It's religion. Everybody all over the world, including the religious, mainstream religions, that hate every grace preacher they've heard of and call them cultic and call them everything. When they are finishing their services, the grace of our Lord Jesus. And I, I, I tell them, leave it alone. Leave the grace of God alone if it offends you. But you know why they keep repeating that thing? Because it's religion to them. It's just words without meaning. Words without power. It's religion. It's rituals. And I hate religion. I hate rituals. Powerless routines. Routines that have no power. And there are many children of God in church today that are just tired of routines. Going to church expecting nothing. Going to a prayer meeting expecting nothing. Fasting expecting nothing. Praying expecting nothing. And I don't want us to be fasting expecting nothing. Neither should you be fasting expecting nothing. Nobody should be fasting expecting nothing. You might as well leave it alone. It's been there so long. It's so abused that people fast for funny reasons and for weird reasons some even think it's a punishment from God to fast meaningless routines and it became for many people it became a form of fasting is a godly thing but it became a form of godliness a practice of a certain form of godliness but not experiencing the power thereof just like Bible readers who just read the letter. Memorize the scriptures. But the scriptures are not working in them. That, like people I hear boasting about going through the Bible. I've gone through my Bible seven times. And I'm looking at the life that has gone through the Bible seven times. No revelation, no change. When the demon of anger is still there. Bitterness and hatred is still there. And somebody's been through the Bible seven times. Even if they are five. Even if they are three. It's later. So I'm so tired of the things that we do as a church that are religious rituals that are godly acts, godly practices whose power majority people don't tap into. Paul wrote to Timothy and says they have a form of godliness denying the power. Now, denying the power of 
thereof, not experiencing the power thereof. And I, when, when God really turned my life on for him, I hate doing things without expectation. And I'm imparting that to the lives of the people God has given me. That's why we have World Restoration Center Church has very lively prayer meetings. And yet they are so frequent. You would think people would be fed up of them and just coming and dreary meetings and people dozing. No. I don't know any ministry that has, has and I'm not moved to, have not visited all of them. I'll confess, of course, obviously the world is big. God's world is big. But to have the kind of prayer meetings this ministry has more than once in a week and people are deep in prayer and groaning before God with a move of the spirit in every meeting it's not usual it's because we approach these meetings with, with that we, we we don't just want to do rituals so this fast is not something I want us to waste none of you should waste it not even put, don't even put it in a category of fast you've fasted before and you say have fasted before another fast no look at this fast as though it's the only it's the one you've done ever when i come to preach my sermons i, I don't come with the attitude of have preached for the last 20 years no no familiarity so this fast of 55 days i'm talking about fasting unto god and it's 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 so so it's possible to fast not unto god of course we have a, a certain group of friends that have also been fasting they ended their fast yesterday now they believe they fast unto god they be, but they are they are not they believe they honestly sincerely believe they honestly believe but those of us who know the truth of the Bible, we know they are not fasting unto God. But they believe they are fasting unto God. You see? So even a Christian, it's, it's possible to be deceived. And somebody thinks I'm fasting unto God and they are not. And that's why I, I've come to challenge you. I want us to go to a portion of scripture in the Bible. Go to the book of Zechariah chapter 7. And we're going to pick up from there. Fasting unto God and let's just be sharpened and awakened and helped in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit byron if you can give me a little more volume and sharpen my mic a little bit more fasting unto god zachariah 7 i hope you can find it It's just some somewhere just before first John. You found it, Jessica. So Zachariah, your second last book in the Old Testament. I have God's babies and they are wondering because there's someone give their life to the Lord and they're online today. And they've just gone to look for first John, look for Zach. No, it's an old testament book. Second last. For your information just before malachi so chapter 7 of zachariah we're gonna pick up a few things there whoosh thank you lord jesus let's read from verse one god i pray you speak to some child tonight in the name of jesus Nothing is as frustrating as doing things that God has commanded us to do and yet not getting the result that God ordained to come out of them. It's frustrating to do the things God has commanded to do but not get the result that God has ordained for those things to produce. Now, there are two things to that. Let me help somebody. There are two sides to that. A lot of times, and a lot of times, a lot of times, we want certain results, and we want them today, and we want them quickly. 
and the results of the activity that God engaged you in spiritually, their result, their timetable, their harvest is not yet. So there are people that are on God's timetable. You did what the Lord wanted you to do and there's no fault. You did it and God is pleased with you. But the harvest of it, the result of it, the blessing of it is slightly ahead of you. And that's okay. Of course, we have so many people suffering at their heart because they say, I've been sowing seed. I'm a tither. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a minister. I serve the Lord. I fast and I pray. Where, 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 where is my blessing? So, some children suffer at the hands of ignorance, being ignorant of God's processes. That's one side, and I want you to be open. I want you to understand that. Being ignorant to God's processes, and yet one big thing. That's why I've taught, if you've been with me, those of you that have been with me for a while, these children here, you know that I've dealt deeply. If there's one thing God has opened our eyes to in World Restoration Center Church is process. Oh, we've dealt with process. That's why God has come and opened up all the great lives before us. I, I've studied that the, the church has preached the, the lives of the great fathers of the faith from the scriptures, but yet I've never had detail taught the way the Lord has taught it to us, and we've unveiled it in this ministry. The detail to process, beginning with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the patriarchs that went ahead of us, Joseph, David, that, that, that detail God has given us. This ministry, in this ministry, we understand process. And God sent it to us to hold our souls together. And those who refuse to understand it are the ones that walk away and, and say things are not working. Confused, confused children who just don't want to understand process. So, these are people whose harvest of the things they are doing in God. They are fasting, they are praying, they are, they are ministering, they are serving, they are taking in of the word. is just subject to process. And if they will be there and live it through, walk it through, be patient with themselves, be patient with God, in due time, they'll have their harvest. In due time. This is biblical language. I can't give you a verse on every statement I'm making, but everything I'm saying is biblical. In due time, he said in Galatians, do not be weary of well-doing. For in due time, you will reap a harvest if you faint not. So he says, due time, and then he says, if you faint not, meaning... Due time, a lot of times, takes a while and it causes some people to faint. So he says, in due time, if you faint not. That means a lot of times there's a bit of a weight that's not comfortable. So you've got to understand that and that's process. That's process. Okay? In another place, Mark, for the, the, the Lord is teaching the parable, he teaches the, the power of sowing. And in one of the places, he says, the kingdom of God is like a man, listen to this, the kingdom of God is like a man who wakes up and goes to his garden and sows seed and goes to sleep day by day, night by night and it grows up and brings forth fruit and he knows not how. Mark 4. And he knows not how. And then he says, for the earth brings forth fruit of herself. The earth brings forth fruit of herself. So there, Jesus is teaching that the man goes and sows seed and goes to sleep. He has to sleep. He wakes up, goes to sleep. He wakes up. And, and then one of those days, it's a boom and gives him fruit. And he say, he, then he said, the earth brings forth fruit of herself. First the blood, then the ear, then the corn in the ear. And what the Lord is teaching there again is process. He says, the man sows seed and for a moment, his mind goes off the seed. He, forget, he doesn't wake up every day thinking the seed. Do you understand? But he sowed it. And he goes about other business because that seed is going into the ground. He goes about other things, sleeping and waking up and doing other things. And then it springs up and the Bible says, the master said, and he knows not how. Then he says, for the earth brings forth fruit of itself. In other words, throw seed in the earth, it will bring forth fruit in due time. Again, that's process. So let me comfort children of God, first of all, to help you understand that there are activities God has told us to do. Fasting is one of them. And they, 
don't feel bad if you've not yet seen the result of them, especially if you know you've been doing them the right way and doing them diligently with your heart in there. Don't you now say it's not working. Okay? That's process. So there's that category of people in that area. And then there's the other category. I want you to address that first category so that you don't all go feeling bad as I mentioned the second category. The second category are those who do the things that God has commanded us to do like fasting, praying, attending church, Bible reading, and their heart is not there. They, they are just doing it like robots. They are doing it religiously. Their mind and heart is not there. Their spirit is not there. They are just doing it. And then eventually they are saying, we are tired of doing this. We are frustrated. There is no result. There is no blessing. There is no... So there are those now that just miss the blessing of what the thing they are doing just because their attention, their heart, their passion is not there. Now, this message is to make sure that you don't fall in this second category. Fasting unto God is to help us say, listen, if we've put aside our food, the usual food routine for 55 days, then it shouldn't be a waste of time. It shouldn't be a waste of time. It should be sowing to the spirit. It should be a blessing to our lives. It should be a blessing to your spirit, your soul, your body. It should be a blessing to your family. It should be a blessing to your marriage, to your ministry. It should be a blessing to your children. It should be a blessing to your work. It should be a blessing to your business. It should be a blessing to everything God has given. It should be a blessing to you. It should add value to you. That even if you don't see the results now, you should at least be confident at the end of the 55 days and say, I've sowed seed to the spirit. And I will see the harvest. Whether in a week, a month, a year, that seed is in there. That seed is in there. It will sprout and give me fruit. That seed is in there. Because I know I fasted and I fasted okay. And I fasted right. And I did. So we are talking fasting unto God. Because we don't want to waste anything at all. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Zechariah 7. Blessed be God Almighty. These things are written in the scriptures for our teaching. And so we are reading from the Old Testament. And it came to pass from verse 1. It's a short chapter. So we're going to go through it. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month even in Kislev or Kislev whichever way you want to pronounce it but it should be Kislev so the word of the Lord came to Zechariah and that word came verse 2 says when they had sent unto the house of God please don't, don't turn me off feeling like uh, because I came to direct you to get fruit out of our fasting that means every child that is fasting, you want to hear this message. But even if you're not fasting with us, let's say you're visiting, or you feel you're so far removed from us, maybe you're not a World Restoration Center Church member, and you're like, I I'm not part of their fasting. It's a lesson to you in that day that you'll be fasting. Some day, even if it's not today. Okay? So the word of the Lord comes. Verse 2 says, when they had sent, it came because they had sent unto the house of God, Sherezah and Regmelech and their men to pray before the Lord before the Lord not before the devil before the Lord and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts so they sent messengers to pray before the Lord and to speak to the ministers, the pastors, the priests in the house of the Lord of hosts and to the prophets saying should I weep in the fifth month separating myself as I have done these so many years should I weep in the fifth month separating myself as I have done these so many years now verse 3 reveals something very important it reveals that they used to fast every year like that not so. 
because they're asking this year and by the time they're asking this apparently something is not being they, they they've, they've become uncomfortable with their fasting so that's why this particular year they are asking a question they say should i weep in the fifth month separating myself as i have done these so many so many so many years and we're going to find out how many years it had been that they were doing this praise god almighty god is so loving he wants to speak to your heart because banangi i am tired of christian rituals i am fed up with christian rituals if i do something for god i want it to be beneficial to me if i do something in god i want it to be beneficial to me if i am praying i want to pray and pray deeply if i'm fasting i want to fast on point if i'm sowing i want to sow and on point if i'm tithing i want to tithe and on point if i'm serving i want to serve and on point i don't want to miss any benefit of anything god wants me to do i don't want and i don't want you to be there too so these dear people are asking should i weep as i have done the, why are they asking it means they are feeling uncomfortable this time around they are like obviously something is off because if if they were on point and enjoying the blessing of it they wouldn't be asking this question they would be looking forward to it uh -huh. another round of what fasting but now they come to this round of fasting with heavy feet and a heavy heart and they're wondering should we actually do it again should we do it again as we've done these so many years they fasted like that before and they say hmm, so interesting should i weep in the fifth month and they specifically they were organized they did it every fifth month every fifth month and we shall see another detail later so they had a schedule like many ugandan churches are always fasting in january it's like parroted ritual every church in january fasting but there's somebody frustrated about fasting in january and these were asking every fifth month we've been doing it and they're saying should we do it again as we have done these so many years and now there's another key word there they say separating myself as i've done this so many years do you know the word separating the word there what it means it means consecrating self it means dedicating of self it means devotion it's so it's like we set time we set apart time to consecrate ourselves to dedicate ourselves to devote ourselves to god yet even though we are separating ourselves even though we are devoting ourselves even though we are uh, uh, uh dedicating consecrating ourselves there's something we are not getting out of this dedication there's something we're not getting out of this devotion there's something we're not getting out of this consecration yet by design god's design is consecration should take you to some deep place in god devotion should take you to some deep place in god dedication should take you to some deep place in god why is it that these dear people are saying they, 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 they are wondering should we had it been beneficial they wouldn't be asking this question should we weep and separate ourselves as we've done these so many years before so quite obviously that question betrays one thing they were frustrated with it they were frustrated and can i tell you something can i tell you something decent somebody's online thinking old testament maybe pastor is gonna bash us well with some old testament te teaching let me tell you something first of all i'm a new testament love preacher number one number two number two this even though we are reading it from zachariah 7 there's somebody online somebody watching this message or even if they are not with us who has exactly the same issue with their fasting that they ask exactly the same query that if in their church their pastor if their pastor says we are fasting we are tired of fasting it doesn't work nothing comes out so you you can think i'm bringing something from an old testament text but i will tell you i'm, I'm more new testament i opened than you are but this answers a question of multitudes in the christian church another fasting time should we do it again the other time i fasted nothing the other time i so, so, so right there and I want to yank you out of that place by the mercies and the grace of God because God doesn't want any child of God to be there. It's like having a gun. Every time you shoot, it doesn't shoot. 
every time you do what you do, it doesn't produce. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's actually a message of compassion. This is a message of compassion. And some people may miss it. You may think I've come to roast you. It's a message of compassion. It's a message to address your frustration. It's a message to minister, to give you hope, to give you life, to give you productivity in an area where you've exerted yourself for so many years, an area where you've put your attention for so many years and now you're frustrated. Yet it is a fruitful discipline in the spirit, in the Christian work that God gave us that it may be fruitful and bear fruit unto us. And it's a message of compassion and love to, to make sure you're not frustrated anymore in that area. It's like walking to a man who's been investing and every place they invest, they lose money. Every place they invest, they lose money. Every place they invest. And, and when I sit you down to help you, don't, don't think the one who wants to talk to you now wants to grill you for losing money. Or because you know they want to help you so that the next investment you make, you don't lose money. It's compassion that sits you down. So there are many that just not... You go to a church and the fast is announced and there are people who just don't even turn up in the fast. In our own ministry, previous years, we've had to discipline the ministers that would say we are fasting, and you find people that are not fasting. Why? Because they're not ex expectant. They're like, ah, fasting. Because they're not expectant, to them, it's, it's another ritual. Ah, that betrays something. The same thing here. To them, they are like, should we do it again? Should I do it again? As I've done it before, how can I, it's not working. Aha, uh -huh. if you're not even participating in that fast, you fall in this category because it's useless to you. Yet God by design did not want it to be useless. So these people ask in Zechariah 7 verse 3, should I weep in the fifth month they had a schedule separating myself as I've done this so many years. How can anybody be separating themselves unto God, devoting, consecrating and dedicating and yet it's not working. It's something we are missing. Verse 4, then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me saying, so the God of love, the God of compassion, the God of tender mercies, he refuses to be quiet. He actually answers through the prophet. Because his babies are asking, his children are asking, should we? Should we? Should we? And he sends the word through the prophet and he says in verse 5, this is what he says, speak unto all the people Speak unto all the people of the land. And to the priests. Say. Now, the message is to the people. And to who? And to the priests. So there was sickness in this church. The message is obviously the priests were not preaching right or preparing the people right. Like I'm preparing you now working on you now and I felt on my heart that even in these last two weeks somebody can come on board and actually harvest something from this fast somebody can come on board 14 days is many days it's many days two weeks of devoted fasting can actually be more productive to somebody than somebody who has fasted 70 days without understanding two weeks of understanding can open up to you the spirit realm and the blessings, the spiritual blessings connected to fasting. Two weeks of fasting with understanding can give you more than a guy who has done it 70 days in ignorance. So don't say it's too late. It's not too late. So God says, speak unto all the people of the land and to the priest. So the prophet is sent to the priest saying, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month. Now, God even adds another month. There's a month they had not mentioned. They used to fast in the fifth and the seventh month. They had a fasting program. They had a fasting ritual. They had a fasting discipline. That's a discipline. But every discipline, do you see our friends, the Muslims? They have a discipline. It's a discipline. So certain people discipline themselves in the flesh. And they assume they will spiritually reap. No, there is a certain having a discipline in the flesh like a soldier. And I'm a soldier. In the armies of the earth, he's very disciplined in the flesh. But that doesn't mean they are disciplined in the spirit. They just learn to obey orders almost robotically. And that makes them excellent soldiers. But that doesn't mean anything in the spirit. Do you understand? So there are dear people that can fast religiously 
and they show discipline, but spiritually it doesn't avail until it goes all the way to the depth of the spirit. Now, God says, tell them when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, so they even had a routine. Fifth and seventh month. Okay? In the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years, <whistles> did you see how long they did it? 70 whole years, child of God, if this doesn't catch your attention, I don't know what will. 70 whooping years. Hmm. That's not a small time. That's a lifetime. That's somebody's lifetime. So that means, what does that tell you, Jessica? That means there are people who are born when that ritual is going on, and they are growing old in it, and there are some that have died in it. Because 70 years is a long time. 70 years is a long time. There's one who started it, a child began it at 15 years. Alright? And now that baby is how old? By the time they are 75, they are 55, right? 55 years of fasting and somebody is frustrated. But daddy and mommy initiated them to fasting at 15 years. And the Lord is saying, 70 years. Of fruitless labor and fasting. He, he says to them, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh, seventh month, even those 70 years, did you at all fast unto me? Even to me. That's where my sermon message comes from. Fasting unto the Lord. Please stay with me. Fasting unto the Lord. Because Lawrence, if you're not planning to die tomorrow, you're going to need this message. Because if you're still going to be in charge for the next 50 years, 60 years, if the Lord tarries, you're going to need this. You're going to need to. Every now and again, we'll be fasting. Every year, we fast more than once. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your time. And here's God painfully, painfully pointing to 70 years, and that also tells you something. They had never inquired of the Lord for 70 years. They just did their routine, banged away. One year, five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty. And they're feeling, let's pump it, pump it. One day breakthrough is coming. Thirty years, forty, seventy. Now, in this seventieth, they're like, should we again? And God is like, I wish you had asked earlier. I wish you had asked earlier. I would have sent you this message earlier. Earlier. But now 70 years also talks of the, fi the figure, the number of completion and rest. Guess what the revelation there is? God has come to give them rest from their frustration. So in the 70th year, he sends an answer. But then the answer does not come of his own volition. He has stirred up their spirits to be weary, to be tired so that they can inquire of the Lord. You see, when we seek the Lord, it's him seeking us first, stirring us up to ask. So in the 70th year, they are frustrated, so they are asking. And God sends them a message that will rest to them in the 70th year. In other words, give them rest and give them a fresh start. So the message you're hearing now is a blessing to you. Praise God. So, he asks a key question. Even those 70 years when you fasted, did you fast at all unto me? Even to me. Unto me. Even to me. So, what is God saying? When you fast, you should fast unto me. <laughs> you should fast to me. And, and somebody's going to say, what is that? I'm going to try to answer that. What is that? Fasting, did you fast unto me, even to me, that God stresses it twice unto me, even to me? It means it's a serious matter. It means it's the key to fruitful fasting. It's the key. When God says, did you fast unto me, even to me? So he gives a message to the people. Verse 6, he says, and when you did eat, and when you did drink, did you, did you not eat for yourselves? and drink for yourselves. So that means, he's also saying, you did not eat unto me. You did not drink 
unto me. When you fasted, did you fast unto me? Even unto me. Meaning, they missed something of God and it's what made their fast a waste. What they missed of God is what... Okay. <sighs> what a painful waste. You see, I so hate, I wish, I pray that the spirit gets imparted of hating West. It's like people who say they're on prayer altars and they're praying against other people with prayer direction that is not given of God. And they throw in fasting. They are praying against and sometimes they're actually praying against the work of God. West, right? West. West. They genuinely believe they're praying right and they're fasting right and it's a West. West has to end. Fruitfulness has to come in. Then you will enjoy beginning going before the Lord. Anyway, let's continue. You didn't fast unto me, even to me. When you drink and you ate, did you not eat to yourselves? Verse 7. So they missed something of God which made their fasting a waste. I want us to find it because that was a painful waste. 70 whole years, somebody's lifetime. We go to verse 7. Should you not hear the words which the Lord has cried. <laughs> Before I take you there, okay, let me try to put something into perspective. Because that says me, did you fast unto me, even unto me? What, what is it? Let me remind you of a scripture in Colossians 3. When the Lord says, whatsoever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord. Can we open it? Colossians 3. I feel like somebody's going to feel, ah, this is not the message I want to hear. This is not my message. And yet that person who wants to walk away from it is the very person who needs it. Somebody wanted a more exciting message today. And for me, God sends me, this is a redeeming message. Redeeming the next two weeks of our fast. Bridgie, are you awake or you're sleepy? It's a redeeming message. So let me say there's somebody who has burnt the last 40 days of the fast and God says 15 more days you can redeem you can redeem so what does it mean when God says did you fast unto me even unto me did you not eat and drink and fast to yourselves Colossians 3 in verse 23 says this and whatsoever you do do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Whatsoever you do, do, and he's a key. I don't want you to miss it. Because I've preempted, I've taken you quicker to, 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 to just to, to get somebody's attention. Whatsoever you do, so now we are putting the Old Testament verse in Zechariah 7 into New Testament context, and you thought it's purely Old Testament. No. It's very relevant to us. Did you fast unto me, even to me? The Lord asked them in Zechariah 7. Well, in Colossians 3.23, he says, And whatsoever you do, that includes fasting, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Now there's a, 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 a key word there, heartily. So guess what God wants to deal with? It's a heart issue. Heart issue. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So when the instruction comes through a man of God to fast, don't do it because the pastor is watching. Don't do it because the pastor said so. Make it your own possession. Take it as an instruction from the Lord and do it as unto the Lord. And he says, do it heartily. Whatever you do, do it heartily. That means without grumbling, without complaining, without gainsaying, without as unto the Lord and not unto men. So there you are. Heartily. So that means whatever issue God is going to point to is a heart issue. It's not a matter of the flesh that we went without food and we, 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 
We showed God that we can fast. But it's a heart issue. And in case you think this is not a love message. Are my people still online? Somebody probably is thinking, Papa, is today's message a love message? 150%. Is it a love message? It's a love message. Because anything that deals with our heart. What, what is the symbol of love? In symbolic language? The heart. That's why you children do. What is that thing you do? With your hands? Some of you do. Eh? I don't even know how to do those things. Because for babies, especially campus girls. Then others do. Meaning, if anybody has heart issues they'll have trouble with their love walk. Love walk with God, love walk with others. Love walk with God, love. So when God says, whatsoever you do, do it as unto the Lord, heartily as unto the Lord, and not unto men. Heartily, the love walk will come in there. And we're going to prove it in the text. Praise God. So it's a heart what? Heart issue. Now, this message has not even come to condemn anybody or make you feel bad. It is actually a message of compassion to make sure because you're still a Christian and you're still alive, you're not dying tonight. The next fastings in your Christian walk that are to come will not be wasted. It's, it's, it's a merciful message. It's a, it, it's a message that saves your spiritual investments. So let's continue. Back to Zechariah 7. Okay? Back to Zechariah 7. So God asks, should you not have, should you not hear the words which the Lord has cried by the former prophets? Should you? Media, is it my internet or is it yours? Okay, it's back on. Okay, monitor your internet connection. So he talks about their attention to the word when we are fasting. Should you not hear the words which the Lord has cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited? And in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain. Number one, how do I fast unto the Lord, paying attention to his words? The words God is speaking to you. Write this down. The words God is speaking unto you in any season of your life, whether before that fast, or during that fast, or after that fast. Fasting unto the Lord is you paying attention to the words God is saying to you because in the words God is saying to you, he's giving you promises, he's giving you instruction, he's giving you admonition or correction. And when we hear the words of the Lord sometimes, even as we are fasting, we are choosing. We are choosing only the promises. We are choosing only the, the, the beautiful prophecies. And then we despise and we reject the prophecies that admonish us, the prophecies that rebuke us, the prophecies that re correct us. The word of the Lord encompasses instruction. It encompasses promises that he will speak to you during that time. It encompasses admonition. And he says, should you not hear the words which the Lord has cried by the former prophet? So, fasting unto the Lord, number one, it entails hearing his words. Paying attention. That means hearkening to his words. Opening your ear to say, I'm fasting to hear, to see what will God say to me. I remember my years as a young Christian. God would speak to me a lot. After my fasting days, the church I was in would fast 40 days every beginning of January. And God wouldn't speak to me much during the 40 days. But immediately after the 40 days, like the month or two, three that would follow, God would speak to me a lot, a lot, a lot. And I, and I, I began to understand later that I had positioned myself every time I would go into that fasting, the praying, I would, I would do a lot of praying during that season. And then after the fasting, God would speak a lot in answer. God would answer a lot. So if anybody is fasting and not ready to hear the words of the Lord, you're not fasting unto the Lord. If anybody is fasting and not willing to hear the promises, but anybody wants to hear the promises, but if, 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 if anybody is not willing to hear the admonitions, the encouragements, the exhortations, the directions, the instructions, then you're not fasting unto the Lord. You're fasting unto yourself. And that cannot be you belonging to a love ministry. Okay? So what should you expect when you're fasting, Jessica? Words of the Lord. The words from the Lord. You tune your ears to hear the words from the Lord. What's Abba saying? What's the Holy Spirit saying? What is the instructions? And you open your heart, your very life, to hear everything he has to say. The nice things. 
and the ones that may not sound too nice. Some of us children of the New Testament are like spoiled babies. All we want to hear are the nice things. But let me tell you something, a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery and I do not lie. Some of what we call not nice because we are in the new covenant are actually nice by virtue of the fact that they are sent to save your life from destruction. They are sent to deliver you from, from the pit. They are sent to set you back on course of correction. They are sent to open your eyes to see the truth and to take away the blindfold the devil had cast on you to separate you from wrong relationships and to set you on the path you should follow. You call them not nice, but in the eyes of Abba, they are nice because they are redeeming words. Do you hear me, children? They are redeeming words. A lot of us just rejoice at the promises when we are fasting and, and, and the, 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 the good visions when we are fasting. But if there is correction, if there is admonition, if there is rebuke, gentle rebuke, receive it. When we are fasting unto the Lord, we open our hearts to the words of the Lord. And we don't stop only at the time of fasting because it would be foolhardy to tune into the Lord only 55 days and yet the year has 365 days and then you go back to living like a monster after those days, it's a loss. It's a life to be continued. So, one key, what is it, Jessica? Hearkening, hearing, paying attention to the words of the Lord. When you begin to pay attention to the words of the Lord, you'll be fasting unto the Lord. Fasting unto the Lord. Because he's the big player in your fast. He's the big player in our fasting. He's the one we want to change our life. He's the one we want to change our wilderness into a garden and to take our garden to make it a forest. He's the one we want to touch us. He's the one we want to visit us. He's the one we want to renew us. He's the one we want to restore us. He's the one we want to heal us. He's the one we want to bless us. He's the one we want to prosper us. So his words, he's speaking to us in that time. For instance, his words may be forgive somebody. You're fasting and he says, forgive Bridget. Forgive. Those are his words. You're fasting and he tells you, so seed. Those are his words. You're fasting and he says, serve me. Come back to ministry. Come back to ministry. Those are his words. You're fasting and he says, love one another. Those are his words. You are fasting and Abba says, stop the competition. Stop the competition. It's doing something to you. Stop the competition. Those are his words. Or you're fasting and he brings you a word. He says, I'm doing a new thing in your life. And you're excited about that because that one now is a positive message. Receive it by all means, but don't stop at it only. There are others that are going to align you. Pay attention. Fasting unto the Lord. Involves. So, in verse 7, he told them, Zechariah 7, in case you just joined us, Zechariah 7, he says, Should you not hear the words which the Lord has cried by the prophets? So, when you're fasting unto the Lord, you hear his words. Praise God Almighty. Somebody say, Amen. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying, Execute. Ah, now look. Remember what I said a while ago? I said, when the word of the Lord, when you hearken to the words of the Lord, he, when you're fasting, he comes to tell you, one of the things you should actually ask for when you're fasting, don't just ask for financial blessing. Hear me, children of Agape. Don't just bombard heaven for financial blessing. The most powerful prayer God taught me years ago. When I had just begun to fast those long fasts. I would always ask, speak to me Lord. Give me direction. Instruct me. I've always cried out for instruction. I've always asked God for instruction. Guide me. Show me. Speak to me. Reveal to me. Guide me. Show me. Speak to me. Reveal to me. And he has always done that. He has always spoken. So what I told you earlier now is confirmed. I said, earlier on he says, should you not hear the words of the Lord? Ah, he wants them to hear his words. Now, in verse 8 he says, and the word of the Lord came unto Zacharias saying, thus speaketh the Lord. So he's speaking. He's speaking to communicate, right? Come on dear children, talk to me. He's speaking to what? To communicate. He's not singing them a song. He's speaking to communicate. And what does he say? Thus speaketh the Lord, verse 9, the Lord of hosts, saying, ah, what is he saying? So this and when you're fasting, you should be asking, what is the Lord saying? What is the Lord saying to me in this season? We have the word of the year. It's the year of the wonders of the spirit. And it's the year of speed. 
So now, for me to walk into that, what is the Lord saying? What are the specifics? What are the details? What are the instructions? What's Abba saying? Sometimes you fast and you be quiet before God. When he doesn't give you utterance, don't force it. Don't force it. Because what he says to you is more important than what you say to him. Can I say that again? When we are fasting, what God says to us is more important than what we say to him. Because he already knows what we want to say to, to him. He will knows. But we don't know what he wants to say to us. Come on. Bridget, are you following this? When you come fasting, your heavenly father knows what you want to say to him. He knows. You want to ask him when is your wedding? He knows. But there is only one in that fellowship who doesn't know what the other wants to say. It is you who doesn't know what Abba wants to say. So that means it's expedient for us when we come before God in fasting and when he gives us utterance, we speak and we utter. But when he does not give you utterance, learn to be quiet. Yet in that silence, you'll feel your spirit is alive before God. Do you know what I mean? Your spirit is alive before God, yet you don't have utterance. It's like deep calls unto deep. It's spirit talking to spirit. Meditations that many of you will have begin to, to ex have experiences. You can hear your spirit having conversation with his savior, but your mouth does not have the utterance. And should you open your mouth to try to speak, you're killing it actually. You're killing the atmosphere. But there's a meditation going on. And then in that meditation, you'll hear him talk to you. Because in the fasting time, what the Lord has to say to you is more important than your rumblings. Your rumblings. Your rants. He wants to speak to you. So through the prophet he says, Thus speaketh the Lord. Ah! He's speaking now. Praise God. They have asked him after 70 years, see me, 70 years of struggling. Finally, they inquire at the mouth of the Lord. Guess what? It means they have been talking all the 70 years. They are the ones doing the talking for 70 years and never ask Abba to speak. What are yapping? 70 years you come before the Lord, like he says in Malachi, you fill my altar with tears. You cry, you rant, you rave, you shout, you scream. You talk for seven. They talked for 70 years and Abba was waiting to get a word in. Some children, I mean, some people get before God and God can't cut in. God can't get a word in because they talk too much. Some of you children don't know when to be quiet. I meet you all the time. And sometimes I smile, fatherly smile. <laughs> a child comes for counseling. And because they've come for counseling, they expect you to shut up for one hour so they rant. And so many occasions, somebody begins to introduce their problem. And in the first minute of their talking, you want them to shut up. Because you want to speak to them. And the Lord is telling you, they don't even need to finish the story. And sometimes you want to begin to speak to them or to pray for them. But I remember incidents, people have been in my office. They are so laden with their problems. They come to rant and to vent and to spill it out. And as you try to gently cut in to say, eh, eh, Papa, I'm not yet finished. Papa, just sorry. Papa, I'm still continuing. I sit back in my chair. I'm like, continue. But do you know what they've done? There was an unction in that moment. I, I remember this particular young lady. I actually, she began to speak. And to the children that are so sensitive, the power of God has always come in immediately in those moments. She, she, she came, she began to yap, and Oof. I remember that moment like it was yesterday. I felt the power of God lift me in my chair. She sits across from my table and the power of God lifts me from my chair and the unction just builds up. She's hardly a minute into her talking and I wanted to lay hands on her and I wanted to speak and prophesy of her. The anointing just rose up in me like that. Like the Holy Ghost was impatient. Like the Holy Ghost was waiting for her. And I went to lay hands on her and she says, Papa, I'm not done. I'm not finished. Papa, I'm still talking. Please first hear me out. And now, it's not like me to get into a fight with. Because now that's not the time for me to explain. I feel the anointing. I feel the unction. Shut up. I feel the unction. No, I'm not like that. So, she shuts me up because she wants to rumble on for the next 30 minutes to vent. 
Because some of you can't win a fight with your husband or your boyfriend. At least you got a venting place when you go before the pastor. So where your husband or your boyfriend or girlfriend doesn't listen, you know the pastor will listen. And you don't know when the anointing is actually trying to interrupt you. And I felt that, I felt that unction just go like, like a, like a candle that has just been, whoosh. and I, I, I tried to make it up again. I couldn't fake it. I couldn't make it. Something in me just died, just like died. And that young lady just rambled on and ranted on for the next 30 minutes. When she was done, I, I was like, something in me was just dead. I had no answers. I had, because had she allowed me to lay my hands on her in that moment, everything was going to be fixed. But no, she wanted to talk. She wanted to talk. So some of you don't know when to be quiet before God. Papa, are you God? I carry him. I carry him. That's why you come to us. Because he comes to you through us. So sometimes in prayer, God wants you to be quiet. In fasting, one of the things you should learn is to listen. And don't you now also do it religiously. I said when you come before God in prayer, follow the spirit. A certain peace like a blanket will come upon you. Whoosh, and zap you. You'll be like a wind child. David the Sammy says, like a wind child. Like, like you, you don't have, not wind, wind, wind. W E N E A N E D wind. You know, like when a child is just being fed and satisfied. There are times you come before God and you just you you, you thought you you, you you rehearsed your prayer. I'm gonna bombard him on this, bombard him on that, bombard him. <laughs> I remember one time <laughs> the Lord speaks to me about a, a certain child we had been in a certain prayer meeting dealing with something. And God says, this one is now going to bombard me the whole night. I'm going to give her sleep the whole night. Sleep the whole night. I said, wow. If I don't, this matter is going to stay on her heart the whole night. She will not let up. She will speak all night. And sure enough, the following day, conversational, I asked this child, how was your night? <laughs> and my child says, I went home ready to pray. But I began dozing when I was still in the taxi. <laughs> God sure to his word. <laughs> began dozing when she was still where? In the taxi. I said, oh God, you do not lie. So sometimes we're like, mm, we're going to pump it, shake it. And then he says, I'm going to slap you with sleep. So there are times you come before the presence of God. And he... <laughs> Because I wanted to confirm what the Lord had told me. You know, and so I began to doze in the taxi. And I reached home, I showered, I ate the moment I finished, bang. I said, good, he kept his word. He wanted you to shut up. <laughs> Praise God. Now, that means there are times God will quieten you. When he quietens you, let him quieten you. He may quieten you and put you to sleep, that's okay. But other times he'll quieten you in his presence. You'll just have no utterance. Has anybody ever experienced that? You children that are here in the studio. Have you experienced that? And some of you, because you don't know how to navigate that, you just feel so bad. I went to pray and I had no words. I went to pray because you, you are always taking God World War Three. I went to pray and I had no words. And you feel bad and guilty. How could I not have words? You call a prayer meeting. Why do I not have utterance? You text your friends. As if utterance is something you buy from the supermarket. It's given by the spirit. So sometimes it quietens you. Yet you feel your spirit is alive before him. He's like, he's going, Shh. he's just showing you, giving you the peace. And if you just stay there and tune in, he's going to speak. He's the one going to speak. And then other times you'll be amazed the next week, you'll have utterance like a generator. You'll be rambling in the taxi. You're like, tuku, 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 tuku. you're like, when do I reach church? When you reach prayer meeting altar, you're like, where is the leader? Me, I feel like getting the mic. There, there are those seasons that give you utterance. You're like a bulldozer. You want to tear everything down. And then there's those times he quietens you. Now, he wants to, so he says, that speaks the Lord. Imagine, it took them, I was saying, it took them 70 years, Jessica, for them to let God speak. But they bombarded him with their fasting and their mourning and their weeping. So they would come before God thinking they would impress him. 
Now, 70th year, they are frustrated. They say, should we weep again? And mourn. So they practice their weeping. It even has keys. They weep. They, they, the choir would come in. They weep in all the keys. Ay! Ah! Oh, God! <laughs> so now they get now they are get set it's 2024 get on your marks get set weeping time <clears throat> but this time they didn't feel the energy so they say but let's inquire of the lord it's been 70 years of weeping should we weep again and mourn again finally they give god opportunity to what to speak to them the opportunity they hadn't given him in 70 years what a patient God. What a long-suffering God. That God who waits 70 years to speak to you. <laughs> 70 years. <laughs> 70 years God is waiting to speak. God is waiting to speak to them. You begotten children. The children are, are old. Are also begetting children. And God is still waiting to speak to you. So finally the day they ask. Should we weep? God is like. I've been waiting for you to ask. Here I am. And he calls prophet Zachariah. Go talk to my babies. I've been waiting for them to ask. <laughs> I've been waiting for them to ask. So a key to fruitful fasting. Hearing the words of the Lord. Because what he says to you, I emphasize, what he says to you in fasting is more important than what you say to him. That's how you fast unto God. You turn everything, your eyes, your ears, your heart unto him. Now, listen to what he speaks. And what he speaks is what brings them healing. I'm going to read this to you and we are done. Woo! Thus speaks, verse 9, thus speaks the Lord of hosts. Do I still have people here? They are here. Okay. So I want to ask some of you that are here. How many years have you been weeping? So thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment or justice. Show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. Banangi. I wish we had that in year number one. I wish their ears were tuned to hear these words. Because the problem with their fasting in day year 70 was the same problem in year three. And they carried that problem for another 67 years. The day they let him speak, his divine finger like divine surgical knife goes to the very heart of the problem choo, 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 pie. he tells them it's a heart issue why you've been weeping for nothing is a heart issue and when it's a heart issue it's a love issue come on when it's a heart issue it's a love issue can we all say it in the studio? When it's a heart issue, it's a what? It's a love issue. Whatsoever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Heartily. Heartily. Not mechanically. Heartily. Colossians 3.23 told us. Now he, he comes and says, speak unto the Lord. That speaks the Lord of all saying, execute justice. True justice. That means, let me quickly explain that to you. True justice. Now that be a just person. Be be a fair person. Don't be a biased leader. Don't be a biased parent. Don't be a biased boss. Don't be a biased minister. Don't be a biased supervisor. Be execute true judgment. Don't be a biased pastor. One of the things that have hurt me. Can I, can I, can I reveal to you something? Can I take you to the heart of your pastor for a moment? One of the things... It's funny the things that hurt God. I've become like him and I'm still becoming like him. It's, 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 it's funny the things that grieve God are the things that you could call small. Yet it reveals his sensitivity. The Holy Spirit. One of the things, it's interesting. People have done all sorts of things. 
in the ministry journey. But one of the things that hurts me the most is when somebody thinks that when the children, some children have thought I am biased and that I'm treating certain people with certain preference and others because you know what that does it goes right to the core of the heart of who you are it's basically to say you're corrupt at heart you're corrupt at heart because some people see you with some people who happen to be in your vicinity all the time and they assume that you're more inclined towards those ones you are biased against the others you have preference for these ones and biased against the others it tears you apart when you discover that some people actually think that and some of the people who think that deal with you at arm's length they just stay arm's length from you and then there are some children who are bolder in getting close to you and you allow them to get close because they 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 they, they endeavor to get close and those that have things to hide and are running away from you are assuming that they are not loved and then they think papa is corrupt that's basically what they are saying you have a corrupt heart you love bridget more than you love mercy you love mercy more than you love bridget you love you or that if a matter is reported one of the things i've had you know when you're a leader all these issues come to you or we had this we feared to tell papa because we we didn't think he would agree or understand or we thought he would be on the other side nothing vexes me like hearing comments like that i've always told my leaders if you have an issue bring it up bring it up in the in the in the leaders meeting and so it annoys me when i hear anybody whispering in the corridors you won't believe you know there's this thing but i fear to tell papa and the question is if you told him what would happen would he kick you in the mouth stop you tell you shut up i don't want to hear it what now that does is to paint a leader with this he says he says execute judgment you're saying my pastor is unjust is corrupt at heart he's not executing true justice so i'm not even going to waste my time talking to him about this matter because i know which way he will go because nrm defends its own so my pastor has parties in his own church it, it's it's even it smells bad in the in the in the nostrils of divinity because if a man pastors the whole congregation and you think he has parties in the congregation how can a shepherd divide his own congregation and say in my congregation i have fdc i have movement i have upc i have dmc how for a dmc we are not loved how so some of you who may fear to talk to your pastor, you may be shocked the day you decide to say, I'm going to talk to him about this matter, this matter. You may be shocked. So this is why the things that guard my heart, God says, if you want to fast truly unto God, he says, execute justice. Be true in your judgments, in your justice. Okay? Don't judge wrongly. Don't be biased. Don't be corrupted. Then he says, show mercy. You know what mercy is? Kindness, goodness. Mercy means to be kind, to be good to people. He says, as you fast unto God, this is what I'm saying. Learn to walk in kindness. So it's a hard word. Issue. Be kind. And then he says, and he says, show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. This is a fasting unto God. It's a heart issue. It's a love issue. It's a love issue when you're just and fair in your judgment. It's a heart issue when you're a merciful, kind person. It's a heart issue when you treat people with compassions. Compassions is love. When you're loving, the, the, the Hebrew word there is rakam. Coming from the word rakam. Okay? It means to love deeply. So he's saying fasting unto me this is my word to you this is what i said to you when you're fasting god speaks to me when i'm fasting this is what i said to you when you're fasting your heart just walk in kindness 
Be good to people. Judge fairly. Sometimes you'll make mistakes in your judgment. Because we all do sometimes we make mistakes in our judgment. When you make mistakes in your judgment and you discover you made a mistake in your judgment, correct it. Say sorry, apologize, and correct the matter. Walk in kindness and mercy. Show compassions. Every man to his brother, compassions. Walk in love, basically. It's a heart issue. And then from there, he begins to direct your footsteps and he says, and he says, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the orphan, the stranger, the person you don't know and you look at them funny, nor the poor. Now those of you, World Restoration Center Church, every service, every time the service ends, everybody looks for everybody they know, and yet God says, show kindness to the stranger, and the stranger really feels like a stranger at the end of the service, because Jessica is saying hello to Bridget, and Bridget is saying hello to Nolan, and Nolan is saying hello to Scott, and Dyson is saying hello to Robert, and Simeon is saying hello to another commander. And it's all about the ones we know. And yet he says, the stranger the widow, the fatherless, the stranger, the poor, and let none of you, listen to this one as I finish, let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Imaginations of the heart when you're fasting. Fasting unto God. And then he says, but they refuse to hearken. Ah, goes back to zero. When people not hear the words of the Lord, when the good prophecy came, we received it. When the admonishment came, ah, that one we reject. I cancel. I rebuke in Jesus' name. They refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. Do you know what that means? The person who wanted to lean on them, they pulled away the shoulder and the person fell. Bang. Do you know there are people who want to lean on you? Fasting unto God is to put a shoulder for somebody to cry on, somebody to lean on. But then there are people, he says, who pull away the shoulder and that weak person collapses, bang, yet they needed you. So they refused to hear. They pulled away the shoulder and they stopped their ears that they should not hear. Lawrence, do you realize what God is dealing with here? It goes back to the beginning. Hearkening to the words of the Lord. When you're fasting, did you fast unto me? And then when you're fasting unto him, what does he do? He sends you his word. He says, thus speaketh God. So in fasting, what is God saying? And now their fault is they refuse to hear. They pulled away their shoulder. They stopped their ears that they should not hear. Verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as adamant stone, lest they should hear the law. And the words which, do you see this word against the word of the law, the admonishment, the word of the Lord? That they should hear the word of the Lord and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Thank God this is new covenant. Therefore it has come to pass. Listen to verse 13. Now this is where now the person who doesn't want to hear God's words or to walk in kindness and love. This is where they are frustrated in their fasting. Verse 13 says, Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, God cried and they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear, says the Lord of hosts. I scattered them. After that, he says, I scattered them. Far be it from you. So it's like it's a game of hearing. Come on, dear people. It's a game of what? Hearing. God begins by saying, okay, it's a game of hearing. Let me summarize it this way. Bridget comes to the prayer altar, vowing, God, you have to hear me today. God, you have to hear me today. You arrive, ready to bombard him. Then sometimes he doesn't give you the utterance. And he's saying, Bridget, you have to hear me today. Bridget, you have to hear me today. Now it's a game of hearing. Okay? Then, he takes away your utterance, he begins to speak. You hear. And then you say, Sha, that's not God. I rebuke. I cancel. I rebuke. That's not God. It can't be God. No. mm, -mm. God cannot ask me to sow this. But to see why I get it. I need my kamane. Mm -mm. I refuse to hear. But you came telling him to hear you. He says, no, you hear me first. Because what I'm going to tell you, give those shoes to Jessica. No. My only pair, given to me by my boyfriend yesterday, that can't be God. God speak again five, seven times. 
you want him to hear you he's saying you hear me so now you refuse to hear him all right now when you refuse to hear him you come back to bombard him again tomorrow then he says i will also not hear you because you refused to hear me yesterday why do you want me to hear you when you don't want to hear me and yet if you hear me and what i'm telling you it's what will heal you it's what will give you breakthrough it's what will give you the answer it's what will give you restoration why and how do you make me hear you when you can't hear me it's a game of hearing hear me god and god says hear me jessica no god shut up for a moment and hear me no jessica shut up for a moment and hear me so you're shutting him up he's shutting you up So you want to tell God, and he says, well, no, go after 70 years. Or no, Sirika. And then you burn years of fasts because you don't want to hear the word of the Lord. Somebody say, I am not like that. Somebody say, I am not like that. I'll hear the voice of the Lord because I'm fasting unto God. I am fasting unto the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because we are not of the generation that rejects your words. We are not the generation that doesn't want you to speak. We are the generation that wants to hear from you. And in these remaining 14 days, we come with our heart in the remaining 14 days. We want to hear you speak. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear your call. We are ready for admonishment. We are ready for correction. We are ready for healing. We are ready for guidance. Lord, we are ready for the promises as much as we are ready for the admonishment. We are ready for correction as much as we are ready for admonishment and rebuke. We are ready for the promises of bounty and blessing. Even as we are ready for correction, Lord. So, Father, speak, we pray. We position our hearts in humility. These remaining 14 days, 15 days, we choose love, we choose to be just and to be fair in our judgments, we choose to be merciful, to be merciful to those that offend us, we choose to be loving and with great compassion, we choose to be loving, we choose to be loving Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ we choose to be loving. We choose to be loving. We choose to be compassionate. And we choose to hearken to your word. 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 And Lord, as we hearken to your word, let there be healing. Let there be restoration. Let there be repentance in heart. Let there be brokenness, Lord. Let there be restoration, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That none of your children will come out of this fast empty of spirit, empty of heart, or without a blessing from you. We choose love. We choose mercy. We choose gentleness which is justice and fairness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. And I bless the giving of your people tonight. Everybody that is sending an offering through the numbers on the screen. Lord, I bless every giver, every tither, every sower, everybody that is obeying your voice and doing what you're telling them to do. And God, the instructions come to our hearts. We choose to obey your voice. We choose to hear you. Because what you say to us is more important than what we say to you. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And everybody says,
Oh. 